we all started doing something or other quantum. You, you know, there were a lot of uh, excitement, but a lot of uh, inhibitions from our part to jump into this quote unquote unknown field. There was a three um, uh, week workshop which RPG and us together we organized. And slowly and steadily we moved towards that. Now you will see Professor so, so RP Singh's lab has become one of the leading centers uh, in dealing with quantum optics. It has produced good number of students. Now they have spread all over the uh, across the world and uh, in India. So now I leave it uh, to Professor Singh to describe the results from their lab. Uh, thank you, Prasanji, for the nice introduction and uh, inviting me to give a talk. It's really great to organize conference year by year. Um, very difficult task uh, without interruption, maintaining the continuity of the conference, QIQT. It's really great. So uh, I will tell you something new, um, which I have not told uh, earlier. So when at home, I tell my wife that I'm going to give a talk. So she says that both party you, you can't speak and keep, keep on giving lectures, okay. And when I tell my children that I'm going to give a talk, they say, you can't pronounce even photon properly. You say photon, photon. So how you are going to give a talk? <laughs> but anyway, I have been invited. So, and you have to bear with me and I'm going to give a talk. You have to see that how it goes. So this um, experiments, uh, this title is experiments to improve uh, the key rate and security in free space quantum communication. So except uh, we are talking like free space quantum communication. Quantum communication as such is very broad area, uh, but uh, we'll be limiting to quantum key distribution mainly. Quantum communication means say, like you can take uh, a quantum state from one place to another. So it's everywhere, even in quantum computation, uh, you have to take a state from quantum state from one place to another. So it's, uh, and you have quantum teleportation, entanglement swapping, and all those things are there. So it's a very uh, quantum network, quantum internet. So it's quantum communication very broad. So, but uh, for this talk, we'll be limiting to uh, quantum key distribution only. So what is the plan? First, uh, uh, we will be talking something like well-known things, BB84, BBM92 protocol, how you implement in the lab. Then uh, we will uh, take up something uh, which something novel which we have done uh, in this field. Okay, means how to increase the key rate and how to take care of the security of your system. That's what we'll talk uh, towards the end of the talk. So how one goes about this quantum communication? Certainly, uh, as I told you. Have you have quantum state for quantum communication. So you require single photon source or entangled photon source. And uh, these can be communicated through fiber and free space. Both you can use okay, uh, for communication if you're using photons as quantum states. And you can use physical variables like polarization, momentum, time being, uh, arbitrary momentum. There are so many variables, um, length, uh, frequency. There are so many variables you can use. Uh, to form the uh, quantum state and uh, encrypt the, add, make the key, okay? As I told key one of the important application of quantum communication is quantum key distribution, or QKD, and that's what uh, we'll be talking most of the time. So these states can be uh, used to form a key. However, with uh, current optical fiber and photon detector technology, um, we are limited uh, to a few hundred kilometers. We can't go um, very uh, far because attenuation, standard attenuation of fiber. So, if, and it's a quantum signal. I, we are talking in terms of photons, not in terms of beam. So uh, they get lost when you take it to very far because even very good quality fiber will have 0.2 dB per kilometer of attenuation. So this free space quantum communication um, comes to the rescue. Uh, you take it to the, you enlarge the scale and you use satellites to do the free space quantum communication. That's how you can overcome the distance limitation, which is uh, there with fiber. So that is the motivation that uh, when you start doing free space quantum communication, motivation is that you can take it to the longer distances and you can use satellites. 
So why this quantum key distribution? Uh, I think uh, everybody knows uh, you must be hearing these things because you are in the talk. So you must have a higher degree talks also. You must have uh, read popular literature. So why this quantum key distribution uh, assumes significance? Because quantum computers are coming and uh, already they are hundreds and 120 qubits uh, quantum computers are there. And once you have sizable number of qubits, um, this quantum computers with sizable number of uh, qubits are there. Even the strongest uh, encryption algorithm, present encryption algorithm, which we use RSA, can be uh, broken using a um, quantum algorithm, source algorithm. So that is a great risk um, for our present day communication um, because one can tap the information, whatever you were talking, encrypted information one can tap without being noticed and they can decrypt when they have got the quantum computer. So that is the problem, it's a major uh, risk we are uh, going to uh, face. So it's uh, important that uh, we take care of this and using quantum key distribution, one can uh, take care of this problem. So um, our messages are secure as long as our uh, keys are secure. So that's the basic principle. So you have to uh, make secure keys and uh, quantum key distribution uh, provides a way to uh, make uh, secure keys and with secure keys, these secure keys, you can encrypt your message and that's how your message uh, becomes secure. And for this quantum key distribution, um, there are certain uh, methods or protocols, with help protocols are so there is one prepare and measure protocol as well as entanglement based protocol. So very popular prepare and measure protocol, uh, BB84, and it's a modification it's, uh, that is a decoy state protocol. And entanglement based protocol, there is ECARD91 and uh, its modification uh, is BBM92 protocol. So uh, these are the two very popular protocols which are implemented uh, worldwide and uh, not here in our lab or anywhere in India, but worldwide, these are very popular and implemented in the lab once we start doing quantum key distribution. So that's what we have done. But before we uh, go further, uh, let me tell you something um, like how you use entanglement based QKD and uh, something prepare and measure uh, protocol. So here you can see the satellite. Uh, um, this is uh, satellite here uh, and uh, this is entanglement based uh, protocol. So you prepare, like you make uh, entangled photons, pairs of entangled photons. One photon goes to uh, suppose Bangalore and another photon goes to Ahmedabad. And you make measurements on these uh, photons, which you have sent uh, like correlation measurement or you can choose another measurement uh, depending on how you have prepared or entangled photons. So you make measurements and using those measurements, you can get key, same key at Bangalore and Ahmedabad. Now you can do the communication using that. And when you're using entangled photons, uh, there is no like satellite is not storing the key. So you take satellite as untrusted. Mode. Okay. You are not storing the key in satellite. They are being created at Ahmedabad and Bangalore. So you can take it as untrusted node. And uh, nowadays there are so many satellites, swarms of satellites. And uh, uh, if you are storing this information, this information in satellite, it can be. So that's what entangled photon provides that uh, satellite is untrusted. You can take it as untrusted. Um, then there is another way uh, as it will prepare and measure uh, this uh, protocol. And um, here uh, you, prepare correlation states okay, and send it to ground station A. You make measurements on like a uh, sender or Alice, uh, we call Alice sender uh, or you can call any name, it doesn't matter. So uh, this Alice prepares a satellite in satellite you prepare correlation state uh, and then uh, this ground station measures. By measuring this correlation states, you prepare a key. Now satellite is having key K A and ground station is having key K. Now uh, this your uh, satellite can go to station B, okay, and then again uh, it can pick that K B. 
So now satellite has having both the key K and KB. You do the XOR and then this now it has both the keys K and KB. You do the XOR K and XOR KB, and you send it to B. Okay, this ground station B, and again another ground station B is having already KB uh, with uh, satellite. So you do the XOR operation KB K KB, and you get the K. So now both the stations are having K. Same way you can uh, do here, and you can get KB. So you can have like key same key at both the station, and now you can do. That. But here satellite is storing the key, so it becomes trusted mode, and uh, using RF communication, one can have the information. So anyway, that's how this entanglement based source are better for a quantum key distribution. But uh, there are some limitations right now. Uh, people are trying to overcome those limitations um, in using entanglement-based uh, protocols. So we will discuss that as we go. So that's the outline um, uh, of the talk. It's a one-hour talk, quite lengthy. Uh, nowadays, people give a hardly half an hour at the max. Sometimes it is 45, but let's see how it goes. So security of uh, key in QKD, um, there are many students, some of them might be quite new to the subject. So we'll talk uh, how QKD, um, how you make secure key using uh, quantum key distribution. Then we will um, give some introduction to BBIT uh, four protocol, prepare and one of the prepare and uh, measure protocols. And some what are the instruments required in physical implementation of this uh, quantum key distribution protocols we'll discuss. Then very popular attack and how these attacks can be taken care of using the PIST protocol, we will talk. Then uh, how one can implement BB84 protocol in the field, then uh, BBM92 protocol, which is basically an entanglement uh, version of the BB84 protocol, instead of like, preparing a correlation state and measuring. Uh, you use entangled photons and same way you measure the population state. So it's, uh, you will see how it is similar. <clears throat> then some new developments in the lab. So we'll see how one can increase the key rate and uh, how one can take care of security of your QKD uh, setup. So then uh, with, we will summarize and give some future directions what we are planning to do in future. So how you get security for your uh, key um, when you are doing quantum uh, key distribution. So one is um, mutually unbiased basis. You use mutually unbiased basis. Uh, what are these mutually unbiased basis? If you prepare a state in one of the basis, like uh, horizontal vertical linear basis and measure in uh, diagonal or equilinear basis. So you get random results, okay? Suppose you have uh, prepared in, D and measuring in H and V, you will get either H or V. Randomly, you will get something. So same way if you prepared H and trying to measure in D and A, another mutually unbiased basis. So you will get random results. Or you can uh, take the left circular, right circular. Again, you will get random results. So uh, you can have mutually unbiased basis. So that's what you prepare your states, um, population state and measure in mutually unbiased basis, your states. So that's how you get the security one at the point. And then no cloning theorem. That's most important thing in quantum mechanics. Arbitrary quantum state cannot be cloned. Suppose this is the arbitrary quantum state, you cannot make a copy of it. So, and then you can always put a bound on um, um, the uh, error bound, okay? If error bound exceeds, to certain limit, uh, you just discard the protocol. So you can put that's the okay. That's the very important point uh, when you are doing quantum key distribution. So this uh, key rate is for uh, VB84 protocol, where this this is EB here. Uh, this is the error rate, and this is the binary and profit. That's defined like this for a random variable X. So if you put here 11 percent error here and you will see that key rate becomes uh, zero. You can't uh, get secure. So that's the point about
Is how long I am uh, muted? I don't know. Now, now, ten seconds. Now you can hear me. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can hear you now. <laughs> I don't know how I got muted. So this is the BB84 protocol. Uh, you prepare this in the random polarization state, uh, horizontal, vertical, diagonal, and t-diagonal. Okay, uh, randomly. So that's what. And then you send it, and you can assign bit uh, to particular states. Okay. And then random basis you select uh, to randomly you select the basis to measure mutually and biased. So that's what you get correlation state. Okay. And you have assigned the bits and then basis wise you have selected. And that's what the measurement results say. Depending on the polarization, you assign the bit. Okay. Then you uh, match the basis. Suppose this is horizontal, or you have measured in horizontal, or this is diagonal, you have measured in this rectilinear basis. And matching the basis, you can uh, get the key, and that that's uh, that is called shifted key or shift key. Okay? And then you do the error correction and privacy amplification. These are the classical uh, uh, like protocols. Okay, and then you get the secure key. So that's how you after shifted key, you have to do the error correction and privacy amplification, and then you get the secure key. So always the secure key will be less than the shifted key. What you get after basis reconciliation. A basis matching. So that is the BB84. Why it is not going further? Okay, it's gone. So, what are the instruments you require, or what is the system you require to implement uh, this quantum key distribution? So, you require coherent weak laser pulses. Uh, for prepare and measure protocols and uh, for entanglement based uh, protocols, you require entangled photon source. So this coherent weak laser pulses, uh, you can use uh, pulse laser, diode lasers are there, uh, very small, compact. You just reduce their intensity using attenuator and you reduce in such a way that on average per pulse uh, is not having more than one photon. So if you take, if you call it mu, um, in photon number per pulse, it should be less than one. You can take 0 0.1, 0 0.2, or even less. So that that's what you call uh, weak coherent weak laser pulses or weak coherent laser pulses, whatever you want to call. And then uh, this is um, uh, another entangled photon source. Or using this same technique, you can make heralded single photon source. And heralded single photon source uh, again, um, you can use it for prepare and measure. But uh, because this generation rate of heralded single photons uh, is uh, almost same as the uh, entangled photons, so uh, you don't get very higher number of uh, this entangled photons and heralded single photons per second compared to one you can generate this weak coherent uh, laser pulses. Like you can get like megahertz, gigahertz uh, uh, rate with weak coherent pulses. But getting 10 power 6 entangled photon pairs per second becomes quite a, a big task. So that's why these are more popular, but gradually this is picking up. Uh, people are finding ways to improve the uh, entangled photon, like number of entangled photons uh, per second. So here you take laser and you pump the, pump the nonlinear crystal. We will discuss that in more detail later. And uh, these nonlinear crystals, what it does, it uh, breaks this photon, okay, and uh, converts into uh, two lower energy photons. Okay, so and this is called a spontaneous parametric down conversion process. And these two photons you measure, and depending on the measurement, Turvasi has uh, explained very nicely about entanglement. Without measuring, you can't say anything about entanglement. Okay, so you have to make measurements. And uh, depending on uh, what variables you are making, you can say that uh, whether your photons are entangled in that variable. And for polarization, you have to measure in polarization if you want to have polarization. So as I pointed out earlier itself, uh, uh, you can have fiber and uh, free space. Uh, certainly, you need to have optics. Um, then uh, detectors are very important. Uh, you need a lot of optics, rather. Uh, we will see in the setup uh, which kind of optics you need. Uh, when I go for the setup. And um, detectors are very important, like source, and then uh, 
channel where your state is moving uh, and then undetectors. So you can have uh, avalanche photodiode, a single photon detectors, as well as nanowire single photon detectors, or uh, transition is sensors. So single photon uh, detectors, are avalanche photodiode, they are very compact, okay, and uh, they have good efficiency, uh, 60 to 70 percent quantum efficiency, at uh, wavelengths around 800 or lower wavelength. 800. Uh, but uh, as you go for higher wavelengths. Suppose you are going for a communication wavelength, 1550 nanometer, they have a poor efficiency, you get around 20, 25 uh, percent. Uh, but they are cheaper, uh, cheaper, not so cheap also, like uh, if you are using for 800, uh, 10 nanometers, they are around 4 to 5 lakhs. Now costs are increasing, they are in demand, uh, so now they may charge even uh, 6 lakhs or 7 lakhs, something like that. Uh, but uh, Superconducting nanowire single photon detectors, uh, they are there, but uh, they are bulky and uh, they require cryogenics and all, um, and they are very costly. Uh, it may go to 1.5 to 2 crore for, um, okay, for four detector setup in uh, this cryo uh, setup. And same way, transition as sensors also use, they, they also require this uh, cryo, cryo steps, and they become bulky, quite bulky and costly. So let's go. Okay. So as we told, we will discuss some attacks, very popular attack uh, for QKD. You have seen the bb 4 protocol, how it is implemented. Alice prepares and sends to bomb. So uh, this is the channel. In the channel, there might be some eavesdropper, a uh, eave sitting there. And eave may measure these photons, okay? Uh, what is being sent by a list or sender. And after measurement, so you can prepare similar photon, same, same, a photon in the same state and can direct to the ball. Okay, this is called intercept and uh, resend attack. Okay. This is a very popular attack, but this attack has been taken account into this uh, uh, BB report. Okay. And then another attack is very popular attack, photon number is splitting attack. So as we told that uh, for uh, prepare and measure uh, protocols, you use weak, coherent weak laser pulses. So when we say coherent weak laser pulses, these are lasers and laser follows this poisonium mm -hmm. statistics. So these pulses, um, although you have reduced the intensity, on average they are less than, uh, less than one photon per pulse. But some of the pulses is still, because of Poisonian statistics, uh, some of the pulses uh, will have more than one photon. So what this Eve does, uh, Eve uh, takes all the photons, single uh, pulses with single photons, as well as pulses with uh, two photons and three photons, and uh, then it stores in the memory. Uh, Eve has all the resources. And then uh, there, there are multi-photon pulses takes one photon and directs other to a bomb. Okay, so this, and when uh, they do the basis reconciliation using classical channel, using Ethernet or whatever other classical channel, uh, any other classical channel you can select. So when they do the basis reconciliation or basis matching, uh, Eve can listen uh, what are the basis uh, selected by uh, and Bob, and she can have all the information. So this is very uh, serious attack, um, which is uh, there for uh, when we are using weak coherent pulses. So and uh, as I told, um, entangled photon uh, based protocols are much better, more secure. Uh, you can imagine uh, if we are using entanglement based protocol, uh, these are like Ellis and Bob are getting entangled photon. Okay, and any E uh, if uh, they try to intercept and try to measure, uh, entanglement will be lost, okay? It will be broken. So you cannot do this. Intercept and recent attack is uh, not possible uh, when you are doing the entanglement based protocol. Same way uh, uh, when you are doing this photon number splitting attack, that is also uh, not possible when you are doing entanglement uh, based. 
So to uh, when you're using prepare and measure uh, protocol and want to avoid these attacks, put a number speaking attack and uh, other attacks. So what you do, you randomly uh, put uh, extra pulses randomly, and you don't uh, prepare like epulation for photons. You don't prepare photons uh, in these pulses in a particular population state. Uh, you just randomly put uh, some uh, pulses there, and uh, they can be used to monitor the channel. So you have signal like VB84, and then you have extra pulses, which you have put randomly, okay, just to monitor the channel. So since you are monitoring channel, um, so loss of decay states uh, being more or less than the signal pulses uh, indicate that presence of So decay states, basically these random uh, pulses you are sending, uh, that is, uh, used to monitor the channel and that's how you make the uh, make it uh, safer your quantum keys keys your so this is the experimental uh, implementation of uh, bb84 protocol uh, that's what the basic uh, diagram uh, you uh, you have driving electronics um, for lasers and then random number generators and you need time tagger. Time tagger is very important uh, record of uh, time for each pulse. Then only you can say which pulse you have sent and which pulse uh, uh, this Bob uh, receiver has measured. So time tagging, good time taggers are very important for this, uh, for making the key. Then uh, four population states combiner. So you have to combine all the four population states uh, which we have created and send to the channel. Same way, you have to have collection optics, uh, population, state analyzer, and single potent counting module. Uh, we have already talked. And both sides, we should have uh, this time tag. So that's the setup. Uh, you have uh, four population states. So you have uh, four uh, diode lasers uh, here. You can see that. Okay. And um, you prepare in a particular population states. Okay, a horizontal, vertical, uh, and diagonal, anti-diagonal. And uh, here you uh, electronics for random number generation. And then you launch uh, in free space and uh, same way uh, launching optics like proper combination of lenses uh, to uh, reduce the divergence or so that beam doesn't become too large. So you use proper combination of lenses for that, okay. And then same, you can use the collecting optics uh, same way to reduce the size so that you can collect it proper. Your detector can measure uh, maximum number of photons which have been sent. So, and then you have uh, four uh, single photon counting modules and uh, they are fiber coupled uh, and detectors. And uh, so the, you are measuring in two bases. Uh, this is the beam splitter uh, does the random passive selection okay off off and then you have diagonal into diagonal basis half a plate is there and uh, here this uh, pbs is polarizing beam splitter so horizontal and vertical so hv basis so you know uh, which like uh, basis h if you are measuring h like this is the detector for v this is the detector same way d and d you know which are the detectors where it will go so you know it, and then uh, you match the timing for getting the key. So that's what you do to get the key. So that's how you do in the field. At least the, we are doing in the field. Uh, we uh, prepare everything uh, on optical breadboard, okay? And you make the setup, okay? These are the like Alice transmitter and receiver, you and then you take uh, we take it to the terrace we have made two cabins i will show you in the next like uh, slide we take it to the cabin and uh, then uh, we do the experiments in the field so these are the two cabins we have made on the same terrace uh, and uh, this is another building 100 meters apart so there we uh, put a reflector on a tower okay so why we are using this arrangement? Because we were supposed to show a uh, free space quantum combination for 200 meters. And this is the only building available in our uh, campus. 
so we have made this arrangement and the, this has made our life slightly simpler uh, when we are going for the quantum key distribution or making the keys because we are uh, Alice and Bob are very new. So, so uh, this is 200 meter channel and uh, so this Alice and Bob transmitter and receiver are there and you, uh, I have explained already the setup. So that's what uh, you do and you get the key. So this delay thing here, you see, that's what you, you have to make the counts. So this delay is 639 seconds, if you uh, see that. So for 200 meters around our slight variation, you get this kind of delay. So when you are sending H from transmitter and you get this counts in H, okay? So you say this is the forming the key, okay? And this is taking 639 seconds. Same way, if you are measuring in the sending H and measuring, you are getting counts in V. So same basis, but different state. So that will constitute as error. Same basis, different state that will constitute error. So this is your error, okay? Uh, same delay you see, and this is giving. Um, and these are showing like when you're sending H and uh, measuring in uh, D, you get around 200 plus and A also 200 plus. So means setup is fine. Everything is working fine because when you're sending H, you are getting almost equal counts in the end. So that's what. So, and using this setup, uh, you get the key. Okay, that's what you are getting the key. Uh, we are getting around 200 uh, kbps shift key and then you do the privacy amplification and all. You get around 100, uh, 50 kbps, okay, after error correction and privacy amplification. Key rates are uh, like, bit error rates are quite low, you can see here, um, and we are getting a good number of key, but you can increase the repetition rate of laser. Uh, these are the homemade uh, uh, lasers, diode lasers. We have made driving electronics on our own in our lab. You can increase the rip rate of these diode lasers uh, to 50 megahertz, 100 megahertz, and you can increase the key rate. Uh, this is not the like uh, ideal one. This is just to like learning exercise, okay? So that's what uh, we get. So university has explained very nicely uh, quantum entanglement. So as I told earlier, you can take uh, any uh, variables. I will just skip that. Uh, most of the time we take polarization because a polarization optics is very easily available. It does not cost too much. Okay. So that's why most of the time we uh, select uh, this uh, polarization entanglement. So uh, for this uh, entangled photons, uh, um, making entangled photons, uh, you do uh, spontaneous parametric count conversion. This is the process we use for generating entangled photons. And in this process, energy and momentum, this is energy, uh, frequency of signal and idler. That's what we call these two photons, uh, which are generated out of this nonlinear crystal signal and idler. So energy has to be conserved, and this is the momentum has to be conserved. So that's what it shows. Momentum has to be conserved. This is pump, okay? and this momentum is conserved the uh, same way energy is conserved. And in this area, um, our guys are quite knowledgeable um, from India. There are two review articles um, by Karan and Anand Jha from IIT Kanpur. And Ali, our student has also written the uh, review article on this process, how you can get entangled photons. So different crystals, different wavelengths, all those things they have uh, discussed in these uh, review articles. So this is one of the techniques to produce entangled photons, or uh, rather a uh, very bright source of entangled photons. Um, here we are using uh, periodically pole KTP crystal and uh, only at certain temperatures. So uh, you control its temperature at a particular temperature, you get uh, degenerate um, non collinear or down conversion. At other temperatures, you may get collinear, you may get non degenerate. Non degenerate means both the photons, like down convert photons, are having different uh, wavelengths. 
degenerate they are having same collinear they are in the same direction moving um signal nidler a down convert photon pair and non collinear they are having a different directions they are forming a cone okay so that's what uh, you can have different kind of uh, arrangements you can have different kind of polarization states uh, depending on type 1 type 2 or type 0 um crystal you can have all sorts of thing uh, using uh, crystals as a polarization entangled photon so here this is a, a type 0 we are using so you take pump 405 and you have degenerate non collinear uh, down conversion and these are the dual uh, polarizing beam splitter and dual uh, half a plate means they are working at 405 as well as 810 nanometer and uh, this that's where this uh, there two two times it's passing your beam is passing through this uh, crystal so you get higher number of uh, entangled photons and uh, so here you collect the entangled photons or down converted photons Uh, you you call it down convert photons without measuring you can't say so you do the measurements here using this polarizer analyzers okay and these filters are very important okay otherwise your background will be very high dark so filters very good quality filters are important uh, without that sometimes if you miss you are ordering everything you miss this filter you can't do anything you can't do any experiment so these filters are very important to block the background and just select the right wavelength 810 r uh, plus minus maybe a uh, 2 nanometer to 5 so you use these filters along with these analyzers um, and these are the single photon counting modules and then you do the single photon uh, coincidence detection and using that coincidence detection you can uh, find out the entanglement so this same design uh, we are proposing uh, as a payload uh, to do the experiment in space okay so same design will be going we are going to add like hm set up here so quantus payload for entanglement and uh, angomandel uh, interferometer study in space that's what we are proposing uh, this is under consideration uh, we don't know when it will go but it's under consideration so as i told these two uh, these down converted photon pairs you make measurements and this measurements uh, they uh, when you do this coincidence detection and um, like you fix one uh, polarization angle keep on rotating the other so this kind of curve you get and this is like kind of visibility maxima and minima so you find out the visibility so this is the visibility in one of the basis like you have fixed d and then you are measuring the uh, changing the polarization polarization angle or if you have fixed h and measuring the like changing the polarization angle so this kind of visibility curves you get interference curves you get and using this measurements you can calculate the chs bell parameter to see us talk about this bell inequality and all and if this bell parameter or this chs bell parameter it's more than 2 uh, you say that you have entangled photons if it is 2 or less you say it's not entangled and then you measure the robustness so these are the singles counts very robust you don't see like very stable and then uh, quantum state tomography you will see introduced then you do quantum state tomography and you see that uh, how close the prepared state which you are doing the cement how, how close it to the ideal state you are trying to make so it's quite close to the ideal state you are trying to uh, make uh, like well state uh, 0.975 so very close to the ideal state uh, well state maximally entangled so that's what uh, that's how you measure the bell parameter basically you as i told you do the coincidence count so these are the coincidence counts uh, for different polarization angles okay polarizer and laser you have seen that so for different angles uh, of polarizer and laser uh, you do the coincidence counts you plug in these values and this will give you the correlation coefficient you put there and that's how you calculate the uh, bell parameter okay and if it is uh, more than 2 and less than 2 2 root 2 you say that you have entangled photon let's go to the bbm92 protocol entanglement based protocol as i told in the beginning it's very similar to bbm84 protocol again four polarization states uh, and uh, two bases you select 
and uh, you measure um, these states. So these are the random basis selection. These are the bit values you assign after shifting. And then you check the error. You see um, if you are getting, uh, like here, uh, this is diagonal. This is anti diagonal. So you are getting 0 and 1. It's same basis, but they are the different states. You say there is error. OK, so this is error. And there is no error here. So you take this 1, 1, 0. That's the key. So that's the BBM92 protocol. Um, just uh, you have to use entangled photons. Okay. And this is the arrangement. Um, this is the entangled photon source. Uh, this is the two channels you are sending, Alice and Bob. And then uh, again, time tagging is very important. Um, and collecting optics, certainly you need to collect as much as possible these photons which you have sent. Then classical channel for a basis reconciliation and synchronization. So optical setup, this is the optical setup. Here, this is the entangled photon source we have already discussed, okay. One is going to Alice, you see, one photon is going to Alice, another is going to Amba, okay. That is 200 meters apart, as we have discussed. And then, four detectors again, like BB84. And here also four detectors, because Alice and Bob, uh, both are getting these entangled photons. Both, both are using uh, four detectors and for four population states. And then uh, this uh, time time matching you do, or time, time tagging and time matching to get the key. So that's what it is. Um, um, here, Ellis set up. Uh, you see, this is the entangled photon source. Ellis is sitting here, and Bob is sitting on the different. You uh, send this entangled uh, one of them here to the Ellis. Another goes to the window and gets reflected and goes to the Bob. So that's uh, is the arrangement for this uh, 200 meter uh, channel. You can we have done for 35 uh, meter also. Uh, uh, both the senses we have done because 35 on the same terrace we could do and for 200 meters we have to use another terrace so depending on number of people available for the experiment we have done for 35 meter and 200 meters so this is the more uh, like uh, all the details here uh, this is uh, <laughs> we call Thalte's new building and this is called old building astronomy building so reflector is sitting here uh, as I have shown already and this is the 35 meter same building you see so uh, that's what it is the arrangement and uh, again uh, this is entangled photon source one going to alice and another going to bob so let's not so that's what we get for uh, 200 meters okay this is for 200 meters coincidence counts and using this coincidence counts or interference uh, structure uh, we get the bell parameter as i discussed already uh, using coincidence count, how you do the, how you measure the correlation coefficient and how with correlation coefficients you uh, measure the uh, entangle, this bell parameter. So that's what it is, um, very good. So again, here you see this uh, uh, delay thing is very important. You are sending, uh, like if you are measuring H for Alice. So Bob, like here it is 648 nanoseconds. So just even uh, one nanosecond uh, difference in delay, you will not get, uh, counts will completely go down. So here this H, you are measuring in H, okay, uh, Alice and uh, Bob said both, and that will constitute the key. Same way, like BB84, but here delay is different because uh, now they are sitting in the same cape in Alice and Bob. So distance have changed, so this delay has also So that's what you get uh, key around 4.5 uh, kbps and uh, shifted key and then secure key will be less around 1.5 or 1.8 something like that kbps so that's how you get the key you just connect this when you have same basis okay so the diagonal thing v v h h so you can add and do that's what you get the key so that's what uh, we have done experiments for 35 uh, meter and 200 meters. Okay, and for those uh, days, like suppose uh, this is 35 meter and this is uh, 200 meter. 
uh, on 8th May and 10th May 2021. The so coefficient are dif difference. You can see that a mega meter inverse, okay? And this extreme coefficient, that's how they are defined. Mega means 10 power 6 uh, meter inverse. And um, these are the 2.5 particulate material. PM means particulate material are uh, less than 2.5 micron. Okay, so microgram per meter cube. This is the concentration uh, you define for particulate material. So you see for this day, it's higher. And so even with 35 meter, uh, you don't get a very high key rate. Okay. Um, that's what it is. You don't get very high key rate compared to um, 200 meters. And Cuber is also higher. Okay because of uh, this parameter. So that's what we have tried to quantify it. Uh, we needed more data uh, for quantification. And that's what we are collecting now. Uh, maybe uh, later we can discuss more. So after this implementation and this experiment, um, uh, we now we want to increase the key rate um, and security. Maybe 10 minutes are left, so I will go fast. So that's what, uh, first let's talk of security. So as I showed in bb 4 protocol, uh, we are using four diode lasers. So if uh, they differ in wavelength or pulse width or polarization, um, so desired polarization, they are differ, uh, the polarization which you want to make and they are not exactly that. So that will lead to a certain, um, information leakage to EU, that may lead, okay? And uh, you quantify that leakage um, uh, for different parameters. And for quantifying that leakage, you measure the cross correlation function, okay? For these two lasers, uh, for that parameter. And if this cross correlation uh, is one, you there is no, if they are perfectly matching, correlation is one, so there will be no leakage and depending on like how this value changes from differs from one you will have information yes. so that's what you get uh, for wavelength uh, this is the like they are differing you can see that and because of this difference you will have information leakage okay 10 power minus 3 bits per pulse and uh, same way pulse width are differing, you can see that for four sources of four lasers. So that will also lead to some information leakage. Then arrival time of these pulses, uh, okay, that may also differ. So that will also lead to uh, some uh, information leakage. Same way, special mode, uh, pixels, like some pixels will have high intensity. You can see that. So that will also lead to information leakage. Same with polarization error, okay. Uh, so that will also lead to information leakage. Okay, so you, when you are doing this error correction, privacy amplification, uh, privacy amplification particularly, you have to take care of these uh, errors and uh, in calculating the security. So this is very important if you want to uh, make your, make secure keys. And then uh, coincidence detection protocol. That's what uh, we have uh, done for increasing the key rate. So as we discussed, like BB84 protocol. Um, you try to, you avoid two fold and three fold, uh, like uh, pulses which are having uh, two photons or three photons, uh, you are concentrating only on a uh, single photon um, pulses. But uh, one can use uh, like two photon and three, pot uh, three photon pulses and increase the key rate. And what we are doing, we are measuring the coincidences rather. Yeah, coincidences are very uh, basic coincidence measurement, very basic to uh, quantum measurement. So we are utilizing this coincidence measurement um, for multi-potent pulses to increase the key rate. So that's what, uh, otherwise it's everything is the uh, same as bb 4 protocol, except we are trying to uh, use like two photon, three photon uh, pulses and taking coincidences. So that's what, uh, when you have two photon pulses, these are the probabilities and three photon pulses, these are the probabilities. This is the beam filter, okay? So, and then you uh, do the, like, these are the theoretical and experimental coincidences you can calculate, okay? For different uh, mean photon number purpose. You see arrangements similar like bb 4 uh, there is not much difference, okay? Um, 
so that's what it's matching very well uh, these coincidences you can calculate and uh, then you take into account like two photon and three photon per se that's how you get hierarchy okay error uh, remains same and for giving the security for taking care of the security we have defined the uh, parameters like uh, uh, these are the fluctuation in uh, coincidence count by total counts as well as coincidence uh, detection coincidence detection uh, by singles count okay that's what uh, we define these two uh, parameters and then um, for our channel uh, like we take uh, fluctuations in uh, transmittivity as well as fluctuations in uh, mean photon number uh, as and then for that we calculate like what will be the threshold and if it is below that these parameters uh, these two parameters they are below that we are saying that our keys are secure so that's how we uh, make that our keys are secure and we get hierarchy you can see that we get hierarchy compared to b 84 and dk for the same uh, uh, and uh, we can go for higher mu because uh, you can see uh, this optimal mu is 2.2 for um, coincidence detection protocol and uh, you can get higher key. you see this the uh, optimal is this green one uh, and mu is equal to mu, mu optimal so you get higher key. okay so that's what then uh, we can uh, use like the bbm92 protocol um, um, for making it uh, device or measurement device independent uh, uh, protocol. So what we are doing here, we are using a uh, HM interferometer to um, make entangled photon, uh, entangled photon source. And uh, by using uh, different collision optics, uh, we can prepare all the four collision, uh, four belly states, okay, in HM. And the beauty of HM is that uh, using the translation stage, this translation stage you see here, TS, uh, you can make uh, non-maximal, you can tune the entanglement. So that's the idea. And uh, first we get the maximum visibility. So using the translation states, you can reduce this uh, deep thing, uh, visibility of this curve, maximum, minima again. So, uh, and you can change the entanglement. If you have like maximum visibility, you have uh, maximum entanglement uh, for this setup here. Okay, for this state, psi minus, and same way, phi minus and psi plus and uh, psi minus, phi plus. So you can prepare all the four states and you can tune the entanglement. And uh, then um, in here, if you see here, these are the SPCMs here. And you have uh, two collation states coming and um, you can make measurements in different bases. If same basis, see if uh, they are in different bases you get as we discussed uh, in BVM 92. So that will constitute the uh, Qubit. So that's what we do uh, here. It's very nice relation between us and uh, this Qubit. Okay. So that's what we plot Qubit versus S. So you see, uh, even at 10 uh, percent Qubit, you have entanglement. And then uh, for different uh, bell states, we have uh, measured this uh, Qubit and S. Then what we have done, uh, we have uh, mutual information now. We measure between Alice and Bob and Ellis and Eve. So if you want to have a secure key, uh, mutual information between Ellis and Bob should be more than the Ellis and Eve. So we see that uh, if our Qubit is below 4%, you see here, all the four, four belly states, if our Qubit is below 4%, we get the positive security. So just by looking at the Qubit, we have seen the relation between Qubit and, uh, and uh, this bell parameter. And here we say that below this cuber, we have positive uh, security. So just by looking at the cuber, we can tell uh, that uh, we are having uh, secure keys and uh, like photons are entangled and we are having secure keys. So this is uh, one of the techniques and it may uh, lead to a device or measurement device independent. Uh, you can, you can. RPG. Uh, so these are the published papers um, and we are moving towards satellite-based quantum communication. Uh, so this is the schematic diagram for that. Okay, uh, this is for BB84 and this can be changed to uh, entangled photon source instead of one telescope. If you're using entangled photon source in the payload, you have to use two telescopes. 
So that's the thing. And then at ground, again, you have uh, four detectors, uh, as we discussed, are two stations if you are using entangled photons. So same way, like it's same, uh, just you have to have uh, more uh, control and very robust uh, system you should have, uh, which can like take vibrations or vacuum, a thermo vac chamber, you have to pass through that space qualification you have to do. Like um, it should work in vacuum, it should work at high temperature, low temperature, it should uh, be sustainable uh, vibration, uh, it should sustain. So all those things you check, otherwise uh, things remain same, just it has to be robust and space qualified. Other basic physics same, synchronization, uh, classical channel, you're using RF as classical channel, uh, radio frequency. A standard satellite connection technique we are using for classical. So that's what you do. Then uh, that's what uh, we have shown these things. And uh, future we uh, want to see the effect of turbulence and how to mitigate using adaptive optics. Uh, we have started working on that uh, along with uh, astronomy guys uh, who are very good in adaptive optics as well as they also study turbulence. So uh, a lot of uh, like overlap between uh, when you go for this uh, in astronomy and uh, in free space quantum computing. So simulating conditions for uplink and downlink uh, that can be done uh, using this turbulence cell uh, very nicely. Um, as I have shown you the setup, once you keep this turbulence cell near a list and once you keep, keep near the box, and uh, that's how you can uh, do the simulation for uplink and downlink. Making device independent protocol as already discussed and uh, that's what we are uh, working on. We'll be submitting manuscript soon. And then one can use structured beams to uh, and make your QKD more robust and uh, secure. And um, since we have seen entanglement for 200 meters already and 300 meters also uh, along with SAC, so we are working towards this uh, swiping of entanglement to move for quantum network. And so that's the idea. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Time in time. Uh, thank you. On on time. Time. Now, uh, questions? There is one question, can we use quantum channel as a classical channel? Quantum channel is a classical channel. Yeah. Uh, quantum channel is a classical channel. Uh, means uh, there is no like uh, when you are doing free space, it's not like there is different channel. When you are sending quantum states, quantum state. Okay, you are using the same free space uh, for, for uh, um, classical also. Okay, so the uh, same free space you can use um, to send the pulse for synchronization, like light pulse. So it's not like that you are using something different completely. Uh, how you define, uh, like experimentally, that's what you do. You can use same free space. So I don't know exactly what uh, he means by, our person means by the question. quantum channel, classical channel. You can also separate, send a separate question. There's another question about, you know, use of lasers and security analysis for QKD. Okay. Use of lasers and security analysis. Yeah. So it, the security analysis will vary from uh, setup to setup. If you have different setup, uh, you have to have uh, different kind of security analysis. It will depend on the setup. You can unmute yourself. Whoever wants to ask question can unmute uh, and ask questions. Um, Uh, what are the questions? Sir, can you use quantum channel as a classical channel? This is the one uh, question. So quantum channel, when you're sending quantum state, that's what you are calling, but uh, free space, you can same uh, free space, you can use for sending uh, your uh, uh, Bacon laser also. And uh, that's what you use Bacon laser, helium nyan, as I've shown you, helium nyan laser was there as Bacon laser, you are using same. So it's not, uh, because you're using quantum, instead you call quantum channel, but same thing you can use for same space you can use for this. And then what is the next question? Um, laser that beam as source. That you have as, uh, you know, someone can easily steal information. Sorry. So laser pulse, you are not using, uh, you are attenuating it uh, so that uh, on average, there is only one maximum one number of photon per pulse. So this security, we have uh, talked how to um, take care of the security. Uh, you should not have 
or how you can use multi photon pulses also uh, to improve the key rate so all those things you can do depending on your uh, ingenuity so and then what is the question present research regarding quantum annealing based uh, models uh, i am an, i am not aware of uh, this field too much so i will not uh, venture to answer this question quantum annealers and all those things prashant ji can uh, that answer that see that there are specific talks there there are different uh, different ways of uh, quantum computation one is you know adiabatic uh, annealing based kind of thing which is like a du wave a computer which uses it then gate base is the one which is ibm using it a q treats uh, there is question regarding q treats have been used by right. ukd uh, so q treats their proposals but uh, i doubt they have used q treats for uh, ukd um om beams have been used but uh, i think only um, uh, as a qubit only not as a q treat Uh, I don't remember exactly. There was a paper, Ravi ji. There was a paper hmm. by uh, Jailinger's group. Maybe one can check it out. There was some result from Jailinger group. I remember. Uh, for QKD, they have done experiments. A uh, Q-trip based QKD. After that, they did not. They have talked of security, and uh, you can get higher uh, security and uh, maybe more robust. Uh, all those advantages you get, uh, you can have more information. Uh, all those things you can have, but uh, experimentally, whether it has been done, I I don't have much idea. To be frank, uh, one can check. Uh, good. I am doing project about this. Um, doing project about this matter. What can I do, sir? Uh, <laughs> I am doing a project about this. Just uh, keep on uh, discussing people who are working in this field. Um, okay that's what i will suggest you can um, keep in touch with me you can talk to me anytime whenever you feel like um why does entanglement based bwm network program being uh, mostly used while it has uh, a low speed data sharing um because you don't get very high number of entangled photon uh, pairs per second using uh, this spdc process that is the uh, problem that's why you are get not getting very high speed uh, compared to prepare and move. so that's that's part it is uh, limiting right now as well as the detector also um, we have uh, like um, jitter time jitter time uncertainty as well as this date time and response time those things also uh, are the limiting factors along with uh, like pair generation rate why is qkd not used in uh, to transmit uh, data qkd is key only qkd is for key once you have the key uh, you can encrypt uh, the information and uh, transmit the data so that's what it is qkd as name suggests it's key distribution so as i told in the beginning your message is secure or your data is secure as long as your keys are secure to encrypt that so you make uh, secure keys by using qkd and then transmit the data encrypt the data using that key and transmit that okay i think how we overcome the environmental noise during qkd environmental noise you take care uh, that is accounted into a uh, cube that is taken mathematically uh, if you see the expression that is taken care of uh, uh, in uh, qkd okay so that will constitute as a uh, cube and all that's well taken care of <clears throat> you don't have to do much there so sir for laser system based qkd how to analyze security um, we have discussed already uh, if you have a uh, different lasers but you have single laser then uh, you have to see um, in a different way we have talked about this four laser system but if you have single laser then again uh, you have to see how to analyze the security but you can analyze again uh, basically uh, a security The basic uh, concept is that uh, mutual information between Alice and Bob, our sender and receiver, are two parties where we want to communicate. Should be more than the uh, mutual information between Alice and you, or Bob and you. Okay, the the eavesdropper who is trying to. So that's what uh, basic uh, you have to calculate mutual information, and that should be more than the Alice and you. If Alice and Bob are communicating, uh, that should be less than the Alice and Bob. If Alice and Bob are communicating. So that's what it is. That's how you do the security. I think yeah, I we will uh, stop here. And yeah. other people, please send the questions to Atiji. 
and uh, or otherwise you send us, we'll forward to him. And uh, he's always open for answering questions. Okay, so, there's so uh, many questions, huh? So many questions, very nice. Good, they can ask. Okay, thank you. Uh -huh. There are so many students asking questions. That's so, uh, really nice. Thank so you. Thank you, Arpijit. Huh? Okay, Prashanji, thanks a lot. Dr. Lakshimal, are you around? Uh, yes, I'm around. Can you okay. hear me? Yes, 